Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about file uploads for your website and app. So I actually run an e-learning website, so I have students here. I've been playing around with the idea of allowing other instructors to upload their content as well. So it would become more like a platform with multiple instructors. Now one of the most important features to implement something like that is going to be file uploads. So these instructors will need to upload their videos, their images, actually a lot of images, maybe like a PDF file and these other file types. So I've been thinking about how to implement that and you probably have run into similar issues that I will run into building this out because a lot of these issues have to do with some fundamental aspects of file uploading. So what I would like to do is the user should be able to upload content here and I wanna have some kind of file picker. I'm actually using FileStack in this video. They are today's sponsor. And the user should be able to upload from a range of sources, for example, from their own device or from some URL on the internet uh, or some social media platform even, or maybe they have some other storage. So the user should be able to drag and drop it on there or if they click, we wanna open up their OS level file picker. So I'm on Mac. So if you're on Windows, that may look a bit different, but this is at the platform level and they should be able to upload one or multiple files. Let's say I'm gonna upload this image here. And then if it's an image, for example, we may wanna allow the user to edit the image like cropping or circling or rotating them. And then ultimately they should be able to actually press upload and actually upload it to our server perhaps, or in this case to a to the file stack account. And then I wanna display the content that they have uploaded here. I also want to give them the option to delete, let's say. So there are lots of moving parts, especially if you would have to implement that yourself. So what are technically speaking the things that I would need here? Well, I would need a CDN to actually serve the content. So for example, this image here is being served from a CDN. So I need some kind of CDN. I also need some way to transform the uploaded assets. So transformations, because um, I uploaded a pretty large image but I'm only displaying it on this page here as a small square image here. So I wanna be able to transform the image so that we can download a smaller version basically. Same with videos, for example, but just also some general optimizations like compression. If somebody would upload a PNG image, PNG is very, is very high quality, it's lossless. We may just wanna use WebP, for example, which is a more optimized uh, format. Now for the students that will actually watch the videos or will display the images, especially on a global platform, your actual end users will have all sorts of different devices, different capabilities. And actually this has to do a lot with the transformation. So for example, they may have a retina screen, in which case we can load higher quality images, or they may have a lower end device, lower end mobile phone. In that case, we wanna download smaller images, smaller video. So we need to have some solution that allows us to adjust these assets. So these mostly have to do with uh, actual displaying the content. But of course, we, we, the actual uploading part is just as important. So we want to have very importantly, not only fast, but also reliable uploading, especially if it's a large file like a video that it's not in the middle of uploading going to uh, quit or something. Now, in terms of UI, it should look good. We want to have a loading indicator. And so we also want to make sure that the whole process in terms of design and user experience is also great. And there are some other things. I would say this is the core of it. Now, technically, yes, you could implement all of this yourself, but I would say if you can find a solution that does all of that for you, I would highly consider using that solution. So that's why I'm using FileStack. They are today's sponsor, and I've actually been using them for quite some time. I've always had a great experience with them. And in my personal experience, they fulfill those requirements I just laid out. So that's the widget that we saw here, right? So for uploading the content here, if I uh, refresh here, you can see this is the file picker that we get from FileStack. And then if I upload something here, it will actually go to my FileStack dashboard. So here in my dashboard, I can have settings, but I can also go to the content browser here to see what has been uploaded. You can see there's been one image uploaded here. I can view all of that here. FileStack will automatically uh, put this image on a CDN. So I can see everything that's been uploaded here in my account. I can get an API key from here integrated into my code. So let's actually see how we can implement file stack in code. So this is actually a React app and specifically a Next.js application, but you'll find that it works with other JavaScript frameworks and other technologies as well. It's a very simple page I have here. So here I have that button upload content. And when user clicks on that, we just set the picker open date to true. And so then we will render this picker overlay. So this is actually coming from file stack. So I can specify my API key. I can then specify the options here. The options is what we see in the actual file picker. So for example, the sources here, 
I can specify all of that here. So if I only want to allow these sources, if I just do that, now you can see I only have this, uh, these three, right? So not everything, but by default, it shows a bunch more. I can allow how many uh, files they can upload. So I can also do multiple, not just one, but up to 10, let's say. And I can also specify the type of files that they are allowed to upload. So for e-learning, I think these are some really important uh, file type. And so if we have this, the user can upload a file. Right, so the user can pick some file and right, so I can pick an image file, let's say, and I can edit it, but I upload here and it will show me a nice loading uh, indicator here as well. Now, at some point, uh, Fastag will have finished uploading this file to their server. And that's when we can do something with the file that was uploaded. Right? So here we can hook into the upload done event. So we may want to close the picker, for example. In this case, I left it open, but we can also programmatically close it when it's finished. But what we can also do if we scroll up a little bit, here is where we get the result. So I'm actually logging that. Let's actually see what we get. So we can programmatically interact with the result of the uploading here. So here we can see the files that were uploaded. So there was one file with this information. So here we get the URL as well. Fastag will give each file a so-called uh, ID or handle, but this is the URL that we can use to display it here in our app. So it's currently being displayed because we got the URL from Filestack. So this was the URL that we got. Let's actually go there. All right, so then here I can see the image that was uploaded. And the way I implemented this here is also that if you click on a view, I'm also seeing it right here. All right, so I have some list component to display all the files that were uploaded. In case it's an image type, I can just render an image on the page and use that URL. Notice in Next.js, we also have the Next.js image component, which is important to know about. But for images specifically, there are some file stack things we that you should be aware of as well. Now the image I'm displaying here is only like, if we actually inspect it, this one is only 40 pixels wide, but what we are actually downloading over the internet is this image. And this image is actually way bigger. It's, it's more than a thousand pixels. And if we take a look at the network here, if I uh, load the page here, you can see it's about 600 kilobytes. Obviously that is not optimal. Now, if we take a look at the image here, what was actually downloaded. Now the image is coming from a CDN and uh, we can also check that here. So you may see, two values for the cache, miss and hit, but this may be just because the CDN has different layers and one layer may be a miss, but but the other layer was still a hit. Um, so there seems to be a cache here that looks good, but the image itself in terms of its dimensions is still too big. So one of my favorite things about Fanstack is it allows us to transform these images very easily here as well by just changing the URL a little bit. So I have the base part of the URL and the ID of my image, but in between here I can transform the image. In this case, I want to resize it to a width of 300, let's say. If I press enter here, you can see now I get an image that is way smaller. And if I actually look at it in terms of kilobytes, network, this is only 41 kilobytes. So this is way smaller and way more appropriate to load here in case I'm only going to display a small image. So this resize transformation is really important when you optimize images. We can do the same with videos, by the way. With videos, it has an even bigger impact because videos are much bigger in size. Now, just to quickly show you how we can use that to really optimize images here. So currently, I'm just using the plain image tag in HTML. However, we can also use the Next.js image component. This has some benefits, but one of the things is it allows us to optimize the image even further. So one of the things it will do, if we now inspect this image here, what is actually being rendered here in the HTML, you can see it's still an image tag, but we now have this big source set with basically specifying a URL for each, for several different widths. So for example, if the image, so if there is 640 pixels of space for this image, we are loading this particular URL for that, right? That's basically what this means which allows us to specify a different URL for different widths. So we can combine that with Filestack's transformation capability to create a custom URL for each of these widths. So we can make it optimal here. So we can provide a custom loader. We can call it Filestack Loader, which will give us the URL, but we want to have a custom URL for each of those sizes. So we can specify resize and then the width being the width of their source set. So we can create a custom URL for each part of the source set. So basically just transforming the uh, string here for the URL. All right, so now if we take a look at it again, what, what is being rendered here, now you can see that I have a different URL for each part of the source set. So if there, are, if there is 640 pixels available for that image, we can load an image that is actually 640 pixels. Right, so in this case, how much space is there for this image? It is, four, there's 40 pixels available and which URL was actually used for that? Well, if I 
open this up, it was actually an image with a width of 128. Why not exactly 40? Well, it's because I'm on a MacBook, which has more pixels available, so it may have picked a larger number. But this is already much more optimized than a large image we had in the beginning. And the browser may also pick a different size if the user's internet is slow, for example. So this is about as optimal as we can make it for images. So that works really nicely with FileStack. Now FileStack has many other transformations we can make. I have some other videos as well with them. Make sure you check out their YouTube channel. But we can also detect things like the sentiment in an image. We can tag the images. We can also do OCR. So if you want to extract the text from an image and many other things also for videos here, by the way, even if it's copyright detected. So I think this is really beneficial for an e-learning platform specifically, but outside of that as well. So I would say check out FileStack. You can find a link in the description. In any case, I hope that you now have a better understanding of how to do file uploads and image uploads. I want to thank FileStack for sponsoring the video. I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.